Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it always feels very good. I have been here, I think, uh, f four or five times in the last 30 years. Uh, and uh, the last time was for the Silver Jubilee. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it feels always great to see how things are developing, how there are many more students, much brighter people like you than, uh, you know, how we were many, many years ago. So I think Samarth is, uh, I mean, I don't have to say much about McKinsey. It's a, it's a large firm, consulting yeah. and all that, right? So, uh, but Samarth is very much like any startup. Uh, so anything that you would expect in a new startup, which is, uh, you know, a year old, uh, happens there. We work out of a very close, small space. Uh, you know, all team members, you know, sit around the table with their machines and everything. We have lunch together. Uh, we go out together. So it's a it's like what you would expect in any startup. I think the difference uh, If any from from a from a startup is not so much in how it operates but uh, what is the philosophy behind it, right and uh, uh, So in that sense, uh, you know given that we are driven by a very strong social motive uh, I think the way we do things or the way we approach decisions right that is a little bit different uh, but otherwise, it's like uh, it's like any other startup. I think as I started to grow old, but uh, uh, no, in most of these things there is a trigger, and I think in my case also there was a trigger. Uh, you know, my father went through a, a sort of a, a fairly difficult situation, and uh, my brother is a doctor, and you know, both of us stay in Delhi, and uh, you know, we felt very inadequate and very frustrated in not being able to do enough at that time. Uh, so. While the thought had been around for some time as you know, we looked around and all but that sort of crystallized it and said look This is a big enough problem to be solved and if uh, and as I talked to other people my friends uh, people I knew uh, I realized that you know, it's a very very common problem of how do you take care of uh, you know elderly or parents as you know others uh, when you when you can't be with them uh, and then you know that's how it started or that's what it that's what triggered it and then you know we went into it we saw what was the real problem we looked at it from the lens of the elderly and so on and then it evolved but uh, that really was the big trigger if you will so i don't i won't say that we have covered a very long distance because uh, you know while the idea kind of uh, started to take shape a few years ago we really you know, put a stake in the ground, got the team together, you know, started uh, work on our operations technology, etc. about a little over a year ago, probably, you know, between one and two years. Uh, but we've evolved a lot. I think uh, the, the premise that we started with, uh, that stays. Uh, and we say, look, you know, we are about bringing peace of mind and happiness to elderly and, you know, their family who cares about them. Right. So that's really the ethos of what we are trying to do. How to do it has evolved because, uh, you know, we started out with saying, look, there are certain services that they would need. And as we, you know, went deep into it, did more research, figured out what the real needs, etc. were, uh, we saw that there was a, uh, you know, there was a, there was a huge uh, uh, both opportunity and, and a gap that had to be, f you know, fulfilled. So what we broadly do is one, you know, we have built and, and we are growing a community of elderly. Uh, we now have about 20,000 members across 60 odd cities uh, and the whole idea is to provide opportunity for them to engage, find like-minded people, uh, you know, continue to contribute in some way, uh, feel useful, uh, have fun, you know, many people just want to have that. Right. There is a lot of life left, unlike earlier years, you know, when somebody for 60 said, look, you know, now I'm close to my end. But now uh, people would still have, you know, today, 20, 30, maybe even more years to look forward to. Uh, so I think that's so that's one part of what we do in that we have media, you know, we publish our magazine, engage in many other ways. And the second part then is also offering services to people who need more intensive care. So folks who are living independently, where children are not around and they need more support. So that's where through our, you know, care managers, through our, you know, whatever technology tools, etc., we provide them uh, support and an environment where they can continue to stay independent uh, for as long as possible. So No, so we don't have old age homes. At least uh, worldwide, the trend is uh, more and more people are preferring to age at home. Uh, 
so if you you know ask people ask senior citizens elderly they don't want to move the moving to a different place moving to an old age facility is almost always the last resort yeah. right and so we are saying how can we create a safe secure uh, helpful pleasant environment a supportive environment wherever they are so uh, it's it's about helping them you know at their place of stay so at home see it's a, so that's a very interesting question because most of us think that the gap is around meeting their physical needs yeah right ki unke liye kaam kar do unko kuch chahiye to wo la ke de do kahin jana hai to wahan pe leke chale jao secure kar do safe kar do right but that's only one part of the uh, equation uh in fact we did a very large research with about 1000 people in india overseas uh, indians you know senior citizens children uh, and uh, we found some very interesting insights uh when we talk to children you know people like uh, you know me also i consider myself among them and you know certainly people like you uh, our focus is always has been on the physical needs whereas you know in the in our research it was very clear that they were more concerned about the emotional needs right uh, people to talk to places to go to the need to continue to feel useful and contributing that is what is the essence of samarth so in order to make samarth you have to at least we believe that you have to look at both the physical needs and the emotional needs right yeah. and satisfy them in a holistic manner uh, so that the person not only is but feels that he is independent right that sense of control that sense of you know i am still managing myself is the biggest value for uh, any elderly so i think at an intuitive level people know so you know if you ask uh, the second question to people and say look you know what do your parents need or what do they you know they said yeah you know they want to talk they want yeah. uh, they want time right and we are not able to spend time we are not able to give time right so i don't think it's about educating it's about making it happen right so at a intuitive level all of us know right everybody is smart they say ha huh, you know give them companionship now, how do you make it happen in a world right uh, say look create meaningful opportunities for them right you, you should see people who you know once they retire if they don't have any thing meaningful to them to do uh, they decline pretty rapidly Mm. right and therefore this is this is just a basic human need everybody wants to feel useful everybody wants to contribute so how do you actually physically really create opportunities for them to stay engaged so the whole idea of creating the community beyond you know this provision of services is that is to address the larger need about engagement the larger need about uh, the, you know uh, the, the 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 emotional side right and now there is enough science and research to prove that that the more groups you are for example a part of mm -hmm. right the healthier you stay and the longer you live mm -hmm. right so continuing to give them opportunities for that is what uh, you know is needed which is what we do as part of our community work so right now i you know uh, so there are three things that i do you know there's a media side that you know my company does uh, i personally work more in education uh, so higher education is what i do help uh, build and uh, transform you know universities colleges etc and the other part is uh, elder care uh, i think in, i mean everybody has the capacity i believe to do many things right uh, the 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 lesson i have learned is that if you have to do something well and if you have to uh, you know have the bandwidth to do all the things that you like then you need to invest in and have good people so behind every project that uh, you know we do we make sure that there are uh, you know good people who are able to take them forward no so i think there are there are all sorts of uh, you know uh, priorities people have uh, i don't think everybody uh, decides to start a new business mm -hmm. uh, people want to work in uh, you know in teams people want to work with other people and i think uh, i would just say that we've been lucky that we've uh, always been able to get good people and uh, we, you know good people have found us and we have found good people so uh, uh, you know i think uh, that's that's one part we invest a lot in also in terms of uh, uh, you know just meeting folks talking to them about what we are doing uh, and then creating interesting opportunities for them 
so one of the things that uh, we do in our any anything that we do anything that i'm involved with uh, we never hire a person for a job we hire a person for what he or she you know can do and wants to do and then we create something which he would or she would find interesting right and that i think has helped a little bit in terms of attracting good people so again i i, I don't think it's any different than uh, elsewhere i think uh, there are lots of people who are doing lot of good work uh, social entrepreneurship as such is uh, probably uh, you know not that uh, not that well developed right not that many people uh, think of it as a vocation or think of it as a uh, you know uh, as a as a as a career right uh, because i think also social entrepreneurship is perhaps not not adequately understood right uh, sometimes people confuse philanthropy with social entrepreneurship right i've i've heard different you know people talk differently about what social entrepreneurship is uh, you know somebody said uh, if a company if you start something if you do something that is good for the society then that is social entre entrepreneurship uh, i think that's uh, necessary but that's not sufficient because uh, i would argue that any company any business unless it is doing something good for the society not right it should not it should not exist right uh, so it's not so much what you do but you know why you do it which defines social entrepreneurship in my mind uh, i think as a social entrepreneur you have to be quite clear that your objective is to maximize social impact right for a typical entrepreneur the objective is to maximize shareholder value yeah. right in this case when it's a time for trade off you know you have to sort of make sure that you are not maximizing shareholder value at the expense of social impact and you would do the other way around right that also has then a bearing on uh, compensation that has a bearing on where you get investment from uh, what kind of returns you generate right because uh, a social venture typically would always generate uh, lower returns uh, than you know by design would generate lower returns than what the you know maximum returns could be so i think the the people who will invest in social ventures will be different set of people yeah. right uh, because for any venture fund for example you know the objective is very very unidimensional right it is to maximize returns to the investors it's maximize returns to the you know uh, their uh, lps and so on uh, but for a social people who invest and funds that invest in social uh, ventures have made a conscious decision right and they are quite explicit about it and any social entrepreneur should be quite explicit with the investors right to say that look you know this will not generate and we are not going to generate you know maximize our our returns on on that dimension so but honestly i haven't seen enough of uh, this summit i would like to hopefully you know once i have uh, seen a little bit i'll be able to uh, i may be able to make some suggestions but uh, uh, from what i have seen so far i think you are doing a terrific job and uh, all the best to you